entrance at a fun. Christ loved us and washed us clean of our sins by his blood and made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. Alleluia. Welcome, everyone, to the celebration of this liturgy. Uh, so good to invite you into this chapel and to invite Jesus from this chapel into your home. Let's uh, gather together our intentions for this Mass. Who do you want to pray for? What do you want to pray for? There are so many needs. We just lift our hearts to the Lord today. Our hearts are filled with petitions and people and needs and praise and adoration and thanksgiving. We lift our hearts to the Lord and say, Lord, read, read my heart right now. Those intentions that I'm consciously aware of and those that I'm holding in my heart that I might have even forgotten. Along with your intentions, my intention today is for Mary Mullen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorification of your Christ and the light of the Holy Spirit have unlocked for us the gates of eternity, grant, we pray, that partaking of so great a gift, our devotion may grow deeper and our faith be strengthened. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix, when I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he had faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Ah. 
According to John. After Jesus had revealed himself to his disciples and eaten breakfast with them, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. Then he said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted, but when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this, signifying but what, what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, halfway over here from my home, I discovered that I forgot to bring the two icons that I wanted to show you today. But at my altar, I have a crucifix that I got from Jerusalem way back years when I went there to seminary. And I have a beautiful statue of Our Lady of Grace right at the foot. But right to the left, I have St. Peter. To the right, I have St. Paul. These are two icons, one of St. Peter, one of St. Paul. Both who transgressed against the Lord quite um, seriously, and yet who were raised to incredible positions of leadership within the church. Let's take St. Peter first. Well, we all know that he denied Jesus three times. And so how poetically beautiful it is that the risen Lord would ask him, actually give him a chance to make up for it. For Peter, not Jesus didn't need this, but for Peter's sake to be able to, to be healed from the transgression. He asks him three times, do you love me? And um, this is a little review. You might, might remember we did this a couple weeks ago or so. You know, the Greek words agape is a word for love, which means uh, the love that would die for someone. It's an absolute, complete love. And then philia love, philia is friendship. You have common interests and your friends, but you wouldn't necessarily die. It's not to that level of perfection of agape. Well, today, we have to look at the Greek. I'm going to do this really quick because we just had this. This is a review. But Jesus says to Peter, Agapasme, do you love me enough to die for me? Peter says, Philo, say. I love you very much as a very, with the love of friendship. But he, he didn't want to put his foot in his mouth again. He, wanted, he was kind of playing it safe. Jesus, a second time, Peter, agapasme, do you love me with the love that would die? Peter says, uh, I'm still not really ready to go there because I kind of said that I loved you enough to die for you, you know, the first time and look what happened. So I'm just going to stick with philo, say, yes, I love you. You know I love you. And please, please, come on, Lord, you know I love you. Third time, Jesus goes, and Jesus, so merciful, meets us where we're at. He goes, Peter, phileis me, you love me as a really good friend. And he goes, yes, I love you. Philo say, I love you like a really good friend. Wow, to know the Greek sure enlightens that whole passage. But then he says, yep, Peter, um, you love me as a friend, but you know, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, 
and the power of the Holy Spirit fills you, you you're going to be let off and you're going to be crucified. They're going to take you where you don't want to go and you're going to st stretch out your arms. And in fact, he was crucified upside down on Vatican Hill. And so he showed agape love, that total love for Christ. Why could Peter die though? He had the help of the Holy Spirit, but why? Because he knew Jesus. Jesus was his close personal friend on earth. And then he came back and experienced Jesus risen from the dead. And he said, he's God. I can't deny him. I'm going to have to be willing to die for him. And he did die for him. Paul was beheaded at Tre Fontani, which means three fountains. And the, the legend says that when, when he was beheaded, his, his head bounced three times and three fountains came up. That's a legend. Who knows? But we do know that Paul you know, vigorously persecuted Jesus, his church. He says, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Jesus appears. Well, I'm not persecuting you. I'm just, these, these, I'm just persecuting these people that are following this guy. He says, that's my body. And whatever you do to my church, you do to me. Paul was, was holding the, the cloak when they stoned Stephen, the first martyr. Why do you persecute me? But then, of course, Paul had such a powerful experience of the risen Christ that he became the Gentile. On my two icons, Peter holds the keys, the one who has authority to bind and unbind, to loose and unloose, make decisions, the authority. Paul holds the sword in the icon, which is the word of God, the sword of the spirit, the sword of the word of God that divides bone and marrow, and, you know, so that he was the great preacher. But look at this is in its primitive state. He's on trial. He's on trial. He's in court. And they go, and you know, and, and Festus is, is talking and he's saying, yeah, yeah. And, and we're still trying to wonder, who is this Jesus? I know he was talking about this Jesus character. And Paul said, apparently, that he rose from the dead. Well, because of Paul's steadfast faith, because of his powerful experience of the risen Christ, he was willing to be in prison several times beaten to the point of death, stoned and drug outside town. I mean, this is phenomenal stuff. Why? Because they love Jesus and they believe in him. They know he's God and they're willing to pay the price. And from that little, you know, who is this Jesus? Yeah, but Paul was talking about this certain Jesus and he apparently rose from the dead. Now the world, I think about 31% of the entire world is Christian. 2.3 billion people are Christian or more. I mean, it's in that ballpark, I know. Um, wow, wow. And we continue, because there's a lot of other world religions. Muslim religion is very strong as well. There's a lot of other people who have not come into the fullness of revelation. A lot of other people who love God, as we've been hearing in the Acts of the Apostles, worshipers of God. They're worshipers of God, and they come to know Jesus. Jesus brings their worship and religion to the fullness, to the apex, to what it really should be personal relationship with the Father through Jesus in the Holy Spirit. So, we now are to be witnesses. There's a lot of people on the world who do not know Jesus. We experience Jesus in our prayer, and our faith is in the faith of Peter and Paul. As I look at the Pundles icons, I said, I'm not just sitting here uh, thinking about some legend. I'm, think, I'm sitting here praying to a living God, to Jesus Christ, who is truly Lord. When I have that Eucharist there, and I'm adoring the Lord in the Eucharist, that is Jesus it is not just a symbol. It is, not, it is real. So a lot today. A lot to talk about today. But we're not spectator. It's not a spectator sport. Enter in. Receive Jesus. And then bring him to the world. With confidence in our God who hears us, let us bring our needs before him. For the church is the body of Christ here on earth. May the Lord grant us patience for one another, bearing with one another in love, with humble and gentle hearts. We pray to the Lord. For world, national, and local leaders, may God, who gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning, grant them just and prudent decision-making, especially in matters of life, from moment of conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. For all who are persecuted for their faith in Christ, may the hope of the resurrection fill them with courage and strength, just as it did Peter and Paul. We pray to the Lord. 
For all of us here, gathered in our homes, may the grace of God embolden and strengthen us in our lives of discipleship to witness to Christ, like Peter and Paul. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, may they come to share in the glory of the Father. We pray to the Lord. And for the deepest prayers of your hearts, obviously we've just heard that Storm Lake was hit, you know, about a quarter of the Tyson workers uh, have, have COVID now. And again, we know many of those will, will, will breeze through this. Uh, many of those will survive, most of them will. But this is just a scourge. This is a plague. This is, this is hard. And uh, this is, there, you know, there's a storm going on right now in, in this whole, in our diocese. You know, so we pray for an annihilation of the coronavirus. We pray for those who have died that they may come into the presence of the Lord in joy and peace, never to suffer again. We pray for those who are infected that they be healed quickly. We pray for protection for those who have not been infected. We pray for uh, a solution, a, a, a vaccine, or whatever it takes so that this can calm down. We really need your help, God. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we thank and praise you for your goodness and for all the intentions we hold in the depths of our hearts. Hear us and bless us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look mercifully, O Lord, we pray, upon the sacrificial gifts of your people, and that they may become acceptable to you. Let the coming of the Holy Spirit cleanse our consciences through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of
the mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Walker our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will teach you all truth, says the Lord. Let us now make a spiritual communion. Jesus, we believe that along with St. Paul and St. Peter, and because of their witness, we believe that you are risen. Because that's true, we believe that you're at every Mass and you're with us now. Jesus, we make a holy spiritual communion right now. We accept you into our hearts. We give our hearts back to you. Bring us into that beautiful union with you. Be at the very center of our heart. Let us be at the center of your heart. 
where you're united with the Father and with the Spirit. And bring us into the beautiful embrace of the Holy Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose mysteries we are cleansed and nourished, grant we pray that this banquet which you give us may bring everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Well, thanks for joining us this week on streaming uh, Mass. Uh, it's just a, such a joy to read your comments and uh, to I put like and sometimes I might even make another little comment, not very often, but I, I really do look at all of those. And I just experienced a real sense of community, nonetheless, in the midst of this. Mass has not been suspended, but public Mass has been. And we're just praying, you know, uh, so for, for us to hit the apex here in this whole, in Woodbury County, so that we can start to think about, um, you know, when we're going to actually be able to gather again. So we keep on praying that that will be soon. Um, I want to remind you that Mass uh, will be on uh, 88.1. We just thank and praise God for 88.1 Catholic Radio at 9 o'clock. So it's going to be on the radio and it's going to be streaming as well at 9. And then immediately after the Mass, we don't keep streaming, but I go to the microphone and, and I play songs and do commentary all the way until uh, 10 o'clock. So please join us there. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.